Welcome to another great adventure with members of the Florida Powerboat Club. It is fall 2018, and this is Stu Jones as we join the members of the club for the fall Bimini Blast, which now has a diversion, and we're calling it the Detour to Marathon. And why do we have to do that? Because rough seas have kept us from heading across the Gulf Stream. We had planned to go to Resorts World Bimini for three days of boating fun, but the rough seas and Mother Nature said, no, guys, you're not going across the Gulf Stream. That's unsafe. But the Florida Keys are right there on our doorstep. So off we went from Miami down to the Florida Keys for an exciting weekend with members of the club heading to Marathon. We have plenty of sponsors to give recognition to as we go throughout this episode, but I do want to thank Mercury Racing for jumping on board and becoming our presenting sponsor for most of the events throughout 2018, and that's all due to the Project 1080, which was not yet complete for this event, but it's getting very, very close. We expect to see that boat out by the end of the year, heading out as pace boats on these Florida Powerboat Club Poker Run events. So let's get things kicked off here on this beautiful Friday morning. Altogether, we have 15 teams registered. Looks like we're going to be riding on the Blackwater 43, sponsored by Boats Direct USA, who also create the Deep Impact brand. And there's going to be a lot of center consoles on today's run here as we depart from Hallover Marine Center. And you can see a great mixture of high-performance boats and center consoles joining us for this weekend. And for most of you looking out, you might think, well, the weather looks pretty darn good. Uh, why aren't they headed to Bimini? Well, uh, it always looks good. Remember that you can have sunny skies and clear skies, but it's not always the case out in the Gulf Stream. We're on protected waters right now here in the Bay Waters near Hallover Marine Center. And we'll be riding in style today on this Blackwater 43. Uh, Captain Ron McLean uh, at the helm with his two sons, Gavin and Jaden. Uh, my son, Tyler Jones, joining us for the weekend. So we got lots of help on the boat. And here's a beautiful aerial view that we just never get tired of uh, as we head out through Hallover Inlet. Really quiet around the inlet. Remember, it's only Friday morning. Of course, by late Friday and all weekend, there's going to be hundreds of boats here at this sandbar. Uh, and as we look offshore, it certainly looks inviting out there in the ocean. But as we get closer and uh, as we start riding along the coastal waterways, we are about to experience uh, just how bumpy it is. And remember, this is just near the beach. Once we get out into the Gulf Stream, you can pretty much double it. So if you've got two to three foot seas along the beach, you're going to have five to six foot seas out in the Gulf Stream. And from this shot, counting about eight or ten boats. We don't have the entire group assembled with us yet, but uh, a great start, a picture perfect start really as we get the boats up on plane here at Hallover Inlet. Now, for most people who are maybe seeing this for the first time, you think, well, this is the beginning of a fishing tournament with all these center consoles headed out to sea. But, you know, the real hardcore fishermen went out about five hours ago at the crack of dawn. And we, of course, are pleasure boaters. And for us, getting up and getting out on the water by 10 o'clock is just fine. So as we make our way out into the ocean waters, let's talk about our course today. Uh, we're going to travel about 100 miles all the way to Marathon. And we could have easily stayed on the inside, but... We know that it's really only a short hop, about eight miles down to Government Cut, so it's not really a big deal for any of us in these big offshore V-bottoms to take that eight or 10 mile ride. It might be a little bumpy, but we're soon gonna be back into the protected waters as we pass through the Port of Miami and head the rest of the way down to Key Largo through Biscayne Bay. Let's give a shout out to Greg Tolson and his crew here on this Sensation 32 because they're all wearing their life jackets. And I'd like to make a very special welcome to Frank and his crew. This is his first poker run in his own boat. This 42-foot Mystic is brand new. It's powered by Quad Mercury 350 Verados, has custom paint, and it is one beautiful ride. He's also joined by another Florida Powerboat Club member, Tom Toto, who's been with us for more than a decade and has owned a number of boats through the years. So uh, good to see Frank joining us. He's been on poker runs before with Tommy and with some of his other friends, but this is the first time he's making the run in his very own boat. So congratulations on the new Mystic, Frank, and thanks for joining us. And now it's time for a close-up bird's eye view here from the helicopter of our sponsor boat, this 43-foot Blackwater Quad Mercury Racing Verado 400Rs to power this big heavy beast. 
and she is a beast. Look at the way this boat is just crashing the waves. This Blackwater was built for offshore running, and you can see how it's designed with the big flare on the hull forward, making it a very dry boat. You can see that we're in a really sloppy sea right now, and Ron's got this boat just dialed in. Watch this slow motion shot as the boat just carves through the seas, and you can see with that bow flare that we're not getting wet at all, even in this sloppy beam sea. And you can imagine if we turn the boat now and quarter this sea and headed out to Bimini, uh, how rough of a ride we would have, but we would stay dry the entire way. Clearly they have made this boat for a serious offshore fisherman, but we're starting to see them get into poker runs now because it really is a well-built and a smooth riding offshore power boat. Now, one of the other custom features of the Blackwater 43 is big fuel cells. Uh, they'll build this boat with up to 800 gallons of fuel and you can imagine the range that you're going to get with 800 gallons you'll be able to go to bimini and back at least a couple of times uh, before you need to refuel and that's what many of our club members like they want to have that long range cruising ability and speaking of long range cruising uh, let's take a closer look at this big 88 marlow uh, making its poker run debut that's right mark and eileen fisher on board it's their new yacht, which they recently acquired. And uh, this is the thing there, they love boating and that's why they own Deep Impact and Blackwater Boats. And they've been uh, owners of several power boats, but they decided to give the yachting lifestyle a try. And so far with this Marlow, there seems to me that it's working out just fine. So they are actually en route with us and you can look, they are on it right now. This boat is all Kevlar layup. For a yacht, it's extremely fast, uh, much faster than most of these traditional trawler type yachts. This boat will cruise close to 20 knots or more, and uh, it looks like they are just getting on it here in the rough water offshore from Miami, and they're headed to the same destination. We're going to meet them in Marathon later today. And keeping our presence of the cigarette brand alive and well here as we look down here at George Frigidis from New York in his brand new 46-foot cigarette Rough Rider. Well, at least it's brand new to him, but it certainly looks like it's very, very well kept. I've seen this boat up close. Uh, it is maintained and serviced at Performance Marine Trading where we are getting the Cigarette 38 rigged right now. Uh, this one's powered by Mercury Racing 1075s. And George has always been a cigarette guy. He started in the club years ago with a 38-foot Top Gun. I think he's owned a different one along the way. Now this is probably his third cigarette. And uh, look at the way this 46 Rough Rider just carves through the water. And I think it's time to start giving out awards for the best rooster tail because this one is certainly one of the best. And, maybe I don't want to and another cigarette owner here from Long Island, Sal Olivia. And he's now two for two. He's got two cigarettes, a 42X, and just picked up this 39 cigarette top fish powered by triple Mercury Verados. Uh, so he's decided that he needs a center console in his life. And, uh, and why not, right? If you can have a performance boat and a center console, you have the best of both worlds. So this is his shakedown run, his first poker run in this new 39. And he had planned on using it to go to the Bahamas because that's why he bought it. So he's going to get a little test ride today, at least to Marathon and back. So he's going to be ready for his first Bahamas run real soon. And now let's say hi to Greg Tolson from Tampa, Florida a longtime member of the club and a veteran of these poker run events with this 32 foot sensation it's powered by mercury 496 ho's uh, which is a perfect uh, pair of uh, engines for this particular boat uh, 32 sensation looks like he's getting a lot of air right now and well you know it's a light boat and it's gonna no matter how you trim the boat it's always going to be getting some air when you're out in these rough conditions but it doesn't stop greg and you know he won't pull back on the throttles he'll just dial everything in and keep the nose down as far as he can and just keep on going. And the reason I know this about him is that he joined us for the Cuba adventure in 2016. So I guess uh, at least going on more than two years ago and drove this boat all the way from Key West to Cuba in much, much bigger seas, more like six to eight footers. Uh, so he's uh, really had a lot of uh, adventures with this boat and this little bumpy ride today is just a walk in the park. Now I do want to say to anybody who wants to get into the offshore power boating lifestyle and start doing poker runs, this sensation is really a perfect entry level boat for anyone. Uh, it'll keep up with all the big boys. Uh, it won't embarrass you at the dock because it's sporty looking 
It's got nice lines, so I know that Greg is looking to get into something else. So if you want to buy this boat, I know it's for sale, just call the club office and we'll get you hooked up with Greg and you can be in a sensation and, and join Poker Runs right away. Now let's welcome this boat brand, Active Thunder, and its builder, Pat Hoy and his wife, Diane, who I would say have all stood the test of time with this club. And the reason I say that is Pat started building boats back in the early 90s. And uh, by about 10 years into its development, this 37 Active Thunder became the most popular model that Active Thunder has ever built. And Pat continues to own the company based in Pompano Beach, Florida. And uh, Diane alongside with him for the ride today, as they have done for many years, joining the Florida Powerboat Club. So a big shout out to Pat and Diane for being true supporters and hanging in there for all these years. Uh, this 37 Active Thunder is powered by Mercury Racing 525s and they are having a great ride today in this 37. And we've now made it safely into government cut. So that's the end of the rough water running for the day. We're gonna be in protected waters as we carve through Port Miami here on the south side, taking that shortcut as we always do across the bay waters towards Virginia Key. Decided to stop the group for just a little while as we wait for everybody to catch up. Remember that it's a fairly small event, uh, less than 15 boats running today. So it kind of makes sense to just group up every once in a while. Uh, it's not like the Key West Poker Run where there's you know 50 or 60 or 80 boats running the same time. Uh, but when we can group up, it just makes for more fun. And of course, it gives the helicopter a chance to catch up with every team and make sure we get great photo and video of every boat. And back on board our official pace boat, this Blackwater 43, as uh, we asked Ron just to slow things down for a minute or two and let everybody catch up here in Biscayne Bay as we regroup. And the only thing that's different today is that we're probably going to dispense with the poker card at Grove Harbor because technically this is just a fun run this weekend. We're not going to collect poker cards, but we did want to group up and get everybody together. Got a total of four cigarettes registered on this small fleet today. Michael and Lori Smith uh, from Naples, Florida, uh, back in the club and uh, active again with this brand new 41 cigarette. Well, it looks like we got everybody gathered up again, so I've given the signal to go and we're gonna hit the throttles, get back up on plane and uh, take our next leg through Biscayne Bay. And I would say the protected waters of Biscayne Bay, we're gonna have a nice smooth ride as we head down to Key Largo. And we had another yacht uh, join us as well, this Azimuth 55 motor yacht to uh, join us. Uh, that's because Dr. Jason Parker just traded this boat in uh, to the Fishers uh, for his deal on his new Deep Impact. And this boat is for sale, so Jason thought it would be great to just bring it along and let all the FPC members see this beautiful yacht. It's 55 foot, cruises very nicely and at the time was for sale at a pretty reasonable number. I think it was about a half a million dollars. So we thought it would bring along and let everybody see it and, and uh, get a chance to maybe add another boat to their fleet. And for those of you who are thinking about something like that, remember that the Florida Fractional Club is alive and well. We are looking for the right boat to do it with, but we're looking for about four owners to uh, share in the ownership and maintenance of a yacht about this size, maybe a little bigger. If you have any interest, just call the FPC office. And uh, getting up to speed here as we cross through the Bay Waters once again with Greg Tolson. And remember that on these smaller events when there's only maybe 12 or 15 boats, you're going to get a lot of coverage from the helicopter. We wouldn't normally keep the helicopter for so long, but uh, we had them already booked to give us uh, some good shots of the boats as they crossed over to Bimini. So since we didn't go to Bimini, we thought, oh, what the heck, we'll just have the helicopter join us anyway. And this gives everyone a chance to get a lot of coverage of their boat. And, uh, and that's what the smaller events can give you. Aside from the fact that on the smaller events, you're gonna get to know your fellow club members much better. And I can assure you by the end of this weekend, everybody was having a great time. And this is really an opportunity that we don't get on the bigger events that we now get on these small ones. So if you get a chance to go on a small one, give it a chance. I'm sure you'll have a blast. 
And now here's a much better shot of that 41 GTR, Michael and Lori Smith uh, from Naples who are back in the club and having fun. And what a great ride. They've got this boat dialed in, running great with these quad Mercury 400Rs. This is one fast boat. In fact, you look at these center consoles now, these guys are running well over 70 miles an hour. And who would have ever thought that our sport would evolve to something like this where center console boats are you know, capable of bringing 15, 20 people and cruising all day in the mid 60s and low 70s. So I think it's pretty impressive uh, where we've come and with the reliability of these Mercury Racing Verados, you can slam those throttles forward when you wanna have a little bit of fun and the rest of the time you can back them down and still be cruising at 60 miles per hour all day long. So combine that with the fact that you can bring five or six or eight or 10 people, you know, whatever you want, uh, that's pretty much the equation that has made this a very successful outcome for all of us to own these kinds of boats and still be having the kind of fun on these poker run events. And we're now catching up with this other cigarette. Uh, looks like a 46, possibly a 50, but we don't really know the boat or the owner. We caught up with him. Uh, he left Hallover Marine Center with us earlier. Uh, not an active club member, but the helicopter didn't know that. But I'm not going to turn down an opportunity to put a beautiful cigarette in our video. So whoever this is, uh, thanks for joining us. Next time, maybe you can actually sign up with us and uh, join the Florida Powerball Club and come on a poker run with us. So this is often the way we introduce uh, people to the club, or it's the first time they've had a chance to run with us. So I hope you uh, end up finding out who we are. Maybe we can get this boat back on some runs. What a beautiful paint job on this cigarette uh, and a great looking ride. And back to what? Another cigarette. Of course, uh, now a second time now with George Frigidis on this 46 foot Rough Rider maintained by Performance Marine Trading in Fort Lauderdale with that big rooster tail Mercury Racing 1075s. You know, I had a chance to ride alongside him uh, in a later event. Actually, it was a winter poker run and we got the Project 1080 up and running. It was her first ride or her debut to the poker run series. And George and I, I think it was right about at this spot, got alongside each other and there was a safety boat uh, running along with us. And the three of us together, it was a 35 Everglades safety boat and the two cigarettes. We all got in together when we cruised down, we maybe about 45 miles per hour, but we got some great footage. Uh, thanks George for sticking it out all these years. Uh, your third cigarette with us here uh, with the Florida Powerboat Club. And I can't think of a better way to spend a Friday morning in the middle of the fall. And arriving here at Gilbert's for our lunch stop. Really not a heck of a lot to show you here, so we didn't get much video. You know, only uh, 12 or 13 boats here at the dock, which is a sharp contrast to the, you know, 80 or 90 boats that we have on the dock here for the Key West Poker Run. So just thought that we would pick this up and share this image with you from the Key West Run just two months later after our fall fun run down to Marathon. And back out on the waterways now as we leave Key Largo and weave our way through the mangrove waterways. Altogether about 15 miles of these uh, waterways in the upper keys. And it's probably the most scenic part of the trip, as you all know if you've done it before. And uh, pretty much from mile marker, say 108, down to about mile marker 93. Uh, is really where all the good water is. And here we are in these mangrove waterways now. We, we really want to see single file through these waterways for obvious reasons. Uh, they're very narrow and there's also a lot of other boat traffic. Sometimes it's uh, grandpa and grandma fishing. Sometimes it's a kayak. Sometimes it's a big cruiser that's coming the other way. But regardless, you really have to maintain a single file. Uh, but it does give us a chance to really have a nice ride and get some good video and photos along the way. And I can pretty much be assured that the one guy that's having the most fun here right now is driving that Mystic. That's Frank Esposito. Remember, it's his first poker run in his 42-foot Mystic, and he's hot rodding through the mangroves. Gotta love it. And an otherwise uneventful journey as we now arrived here at Ferro Blanco in Marathon, which has become one of our preferred destinations for obvious reasons. Uh, abundant dockage, uh, a great marina overall, very well run, excellent docks, and of course, Coors Light, cold Coors Light waiting for you at the Lighthouse Grill. Uh, a great ride for all and uh, a fun weekend ahead of us as we get settled in here 
at the Ferro Blanca Resort. And we're going to be staying at the Hyatt place uh, right here on the same property. So the boats are parked. We only have a short walk to the hotel. It doesn't get much better than this. Well, although we were unable to go over to Bimini as we had all planned, it, this uh, September arrival reminded us that it's a good time to go to Ferro Blanco because there was plenty of docking and it really was a pleasant arrival. Okay, here we are uh, in, uh, on our Bimini Blast, uh, getting ready to uh, go for a little fun run. I just can't figure out why this Bimini van has Florida plates on it. Let's just check it out and see what's going on in here. And we go, hey, we're on our way to Bimini! <laughs> well, everybody had a great ride on Friday in the boats, so we thought we would keep them parked and jump in this bus and head down to Key West for a fun day, all day Saturday. 32 of us all together, and somehow we just all ended up at Smoke and Tuna Saloon. A wonderful place to get together, listen to some good old rock and roll from the locals, and have some great food, and of course, a few drinks along the way. This turned out to be a great diversion. Nobody expected to spend so much time in Key West, and it was never planned, and I think the spontaneous nature is what made it fun for everybody. Thanks to all of the club members who decided to join us for this little side trip. I think it was a day well spent, and I'm sure that many of you would agree. Sunday morning we woke to yet another beautiful day for the ride back from Marathon. Once again about 110 miles altogether. and we had a couple of different boats join us. We had Michael Friedman and his 39 foot cigarette all together making it five cigarettes on the run. I jumped on board with Michael and Laurie Smith on their 41 foot GTR and just had a fantastic ride. Here's a great shot from inside the cockpit of their 41 GTR as we weave our way through these mangrove waterways. It really doesn't get much better than this, guys. This is such a beautiful ride, and this is what makes going to the Florida Keys uh, so awesome uh, every time we go down. And I thought that for a Sunday, the traffic was very light on the waterways, so it did allow us to maintain speeds through these mangrove waterways, but we always do recommend to everybody, when you encounter other traffic or boats fishing, it's always good to stop. And of course, when you get along Gilbert's, it's idle speed only as you pass the docks and head underneath the US-1 Skyway Bridge. And as we make our way through Gilbert's here and into Jewfish Creek, I do want to introduce Ryan and Julie Sharnowski in their 37-foot midnight. They joined us for the second half of the trip and it's the first chance we got to get a shot of their boat. So we told them to hit the throttles and get those Mercury Racing 400Rs wide open. Less than one hour, we were back in Miami to find a bustling boating community as we uh, check out this cool Pershing going underneath the Rickenbacker Causeway. This is what I love about Sunday afternoon cruising in Miami. There are so many boats out and so many different types of boats. Uh, I noticed a lot of Pershings though. You know, there's so much money and wealth in Miami that you see boats that you've never seen before just popping up everywhere. Nice shot of uh, Ryan and Julie as they decided, well, you know what, Stu, we're gonna go for a swim if you wanna join us. Uh, we've had a warm ride and it's time to get in the water. Uh, we cooled off in the water and passed through the Venetian Causeway, uh, making our way along the uh, Eastern ICW route uh, through beautiful waterways. And there's some more big yachts uh, waiting for the Venetian Bridge to pass through. And this is kind of the scene, you know, on a Sunday afternoon that does make Miami such a cool place to 
to live and boat. You do have to be a little bit careful on a Sunday because there's so many people out. I think the most, I think, congested areas are near the inlets. So near Government Cut and near Hallover Inlet are the areas of the greatest concern if you are boating through Miami on a Sunday afternoon. And I think this big yacht wins the Mothership Award for the day. We saw a lot of yachts, but that was certainly the biggest as we passed through Hallover Inlet. And uh, just off to the side, there's our view as we look eastbound. And that's pretty much the same deal every Sunday afternoon at Hallover. And it can be a pretty good party, but it can also be a little bit stressful for anybody cruising through these waterways because of the number of jet skis. You know, way too many jet skis cruising around and probably by about three or four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, a few too many beers consumed. <laughs> but I guess this guy's got it going on because it's him and four girls on a jet ski. Arriving back here at Hallover Marine Center, there's a nice brand new Midnight Express, which we later got a chance to ride on on the Bimini Rendezvous. Another Midnight Express up there on display. But what an amazing, you know, sight to see when you come into Hallover Marina with all of these boats on display. It's always a big show here every single day. That's why we love uh, to come here and stage here for our poker run events. Well, that pretty much wraps up a three day weekend with the Florida Powerboat Club. Uh, sorry, guys, that we couldn't make it to Bimini, but instead, I think going to Marathon and having a little fun day trip down to Key West was the next best thing we could possibly do. For those of you who are watching and wondering, well, when are we ever going to see Bimini and the Bahamas again here on the Florida Powerboat Club channel? Well, I've got some great news for you because our next episode is going to feature highlights from the 2019 edition of the Midnight Express Bimini Rendezvous. Uh, we ventured off in early April and uh, we had about 15 boats registered all together, departed from Hallover Marine Center, went all the way over to Resorts World Bimini. We got a chance to visit Honeymoon Harbor and feed the stingrays. Some of our teams went off and did some deep sea fishing and uh, caught some nice fish while others went off and did some scuba diving. We had a big raft up party on the North Beach here in Bimini. So be sure to uh, stay tuned for our next episode here on Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel. Remember, you can subscribe to the channel. It's always good to click that notification bell over to the right so that you get a notification by email every time there's a new episode. Of course, all of our event details can be found at flpowerboat.com. We are on Facebook, Florida Powerboat Club, and we're on Instagram three pages all together you can pick from right here. Thanks for watching. Stu Jones with you from the Florida Powerboat Club. And remember to keep your boating safe and always wear your life jackets. Bye for now.